Okay, so uh, yes, uh, my name is James Conway, Senior Technical Account Manager with New Relic. And the talk today is a four-step software analytics process to optimize the digital customer experience. Marketing helped me with the title. <laughs> uh, but I want to start with two of my favorite quotes. To measure is to know, which is attributed to Lord Kelvin, and it is a capital mistake, capital old man, to theorize before one has data. And I think this really underscores what we're trying to do with the data we collect through New Relic. How do you leverage this data to make your day better, your customer's experience with your application better? How can you gain value? So you want to be proactive, right? You want to actually be ahead of the curve so that instead of in a, a reactive mode of where you're being a, notified of a poor customer experience when it's already occurred and you're kind of already now in troubleshooting and resolution mode, you can get ahead of that. And if you've got the data, you can start to, to go through an interactive process and really engage with your data. Right? You can start to iterate over so that each time you're getting a little better. There's always going to be a bottleneck. Every system has a bottleneck. Everyone knows that, right? So develop a process that allows you to iterate through and, and uh, resolve those bottlenecks in the customer experience as they come up. So what can you use to do that? So we start with browser. Browser is the reality of your application and your user experience from, from your application perspective. Right? It tells you what is happening. Where is it happening? What does that experience look like? Oh, that's very interesting. I'm spending quite a lot of time in the DOM processing phase. Tell me more. If you're only looking at the back, the back end processing, you miss that 80 to 90% of page load that occurs in the front end. And we know this. And, we're, and we, we show our customers that, and they say, oh my god, I can't believe it. How do I fix that? What can I do? And then on the other hand, we have synthetics. Now, synthetics, in addition to collecting and constantly validating the, functional, the, uh, the functionality of your application so that you can always make sure on a configurable basis that 2 plus 2 is going to equal 4, what you can also look at synthetics as is a laboratory for collecting an incredibly detailed amount of data for that user experience that you can then leverage through insights. Because insights has the analytic capability so that I can take this data and start to slice and dice and understand it. What do I need to work on? Where am I going to get the biggest bang for my buck? Because at the end of the day, anytime we engage a developer, an architect, or just discuss changing our content strategy, it, there's a cost that's, asso that's associated with that. Right? You're, you're asking someone to take some time out of their day to make it better. So wouldn't you feel better if you could do so with the degree of confidence from having looked at 5, 10, 15,000 instances of that page, that page download, that asset? I think you would. So, start, so we start looking at this as, you know, this is truly the platform. This is browser working with synthetics in the context of insights. So how do you do that, right? What's the process? Where does the rubber meet the road, as it were? So I want to start with your browser data, right? Because again, browser is the reality. To measure is to know. This is what's happening. And you can even extend this further if you start adding custom attributes. It's not simply the page duration, the, the DOM processing duration, the backend duration. You can start to look at which pages are correlating with the highest average ARR. Or maybe you've just unveiled a new uh, promotion to a couple of your high target or high value customers or your demographics, and you want to really focus in on that. That's where you want to make sure the user experience is especially stellar. And you can do that from identifying in browser. This gives you your target list. And then you're going to take that target list and you're going to configure some synthetic tests, simple browser tests. Any if I identify an externally accessible page, from my browser, from my analysis of the browser data, it's a simple browser test. It's a five-step process at best, right? And then instead of configuring the schedule to, in terms of how often do I constantly want to make sure that that page is performing as I've intended it to, which it does, which is certainly a benefit, that schedule is going to determine how much data am I collecting. And that's going to be important, because when we go back into insights, because since all we all know synthetics data is constantly being pushed into insights, right? 
Synthetics is, is built a lot, uh, largely on top of the Insights database or the NRDB. But now that I've generated this data set, and this is a data set that's controlled in all of the ways that my real user data isn't, which is great because that's the reality. I've got users coming in from Des Moines. I've got users coming in from Albuquerque. They might have, they have different experiences. They come from different times of the day, different browser versions. There's a lot of variables in play. Synthetics is giving me a controlled data set. I know about how location factors into page response time and the asset load times. I know that browser version, browser type is ironed out. I know that with a large enough data set, differences that might come up from the time of day that a particular page is hit is also going to be ironed out. So I've got a lot of data to work with. So what am I gonna do next? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna use that information. I'm going to take a look and say, guys, these five image downloads are killing us on these pages. We need to make a change. Do we need to change our hosting strategy? Do we need to evaluate different CDNs? Do we need to look at our page design? I don't know. But a change will be made. There will be some detour into whatever your SDLC process is that's going to then affect some new version, version two. Well, how are you then going to be confident that the effort that you spent, the analysis that you performed, and the cost that you incurred in making that change has actually resulted in a tangible benefit in the ways that you originally had identified as targets? You're gonna go back to browser, because browser is your reality. At the end of the day, that is what is happening. We have measured, we've known, we even did some theorization with data for Sherlock Holmes. But this is the loop. This, is, this allows you to have this iterative software analytics-based loop, and this is going to result in an improvement in your user's experience with your site. And I said that faster than I thought I did. <laughs> so, so let's get into the demo, and I hope shaky hands won't be all over the page. Let's take a look at the data. Okay, so this is one of my favorite queries. Uh, I'm gonna be looking at our data. So this is for the blog.newrelic uh, entries of 2015. What this query simply says is I'm looking at, oh, that's an important part. Maybe you didn't realize that as of three weeks ago, the browser guys can probably correct me on this, um, we started collecting additional attributes. So we're normally in that browser slide where we see the aggregate breakdown of what page load time is. We're now breaking that out for every single page view event. That enables me to run this kind of analysis because now I can run a 90th percent, uh, percentile analysis of the DOM processing duration because averages are for suckers. And, <laughs> and I can look at, and I, from the page views that I've collected in, in production, Show me, just for those blog entries, which are the highest in terms of the down processing duration. So this is gonna give me my hit list. Like, these are high numbers. I might wanna do something about this, and even more concerningly is that this implies that for 10% of my users, or 10% of the pages that I'm looking at, the down processing uh, duration, you know, where we're looking at building out the page, is even higher than these numbers. So I might wanna do something about that. So how do, I do, how do I do that? And these are the pages that we're looking at. This, uh, quoting by the book, this one was I think number one. And then I also set up one for most popular programming languages of 2015. This is an especially popular blog post. So I set up my synthetic monitor. This is I believe looking at the coding by the book. So I set up, so three days ago, I set up some tests and I started collecting data, the very, very granular data, because with synthetics we control the browser environment and we can get all of this great page level or page asset level details. And I started, I set some monitors up from around the world. And if I take a look at one in particular, I think I opened you up. There. So, <laughs> Windows. Um, so this is one particularly egregious example of where the, the DOM content was 35 seconds out of an overall 37-second 37, uh, 37 page load time. Now, by default, Synthetics presents the loading of these assets in a timeline fashion so that you can actually see what the browser was doing over time. I don't want to do that. I want to sort it by duration. Show me what I should be looking at. What is making up my DOM processing time that I've already identified as being so important? 
Well, I've got a good guess. <laughs> and if I flip here, let's see, this is all scaled. OK. So again, this is an example of the, the, the level of detail that we're ca capturing now in synthetics in our lab environment, right? I'm breaking out the TCP communication so that I can identify whether or not there's a problem with the network, whether there's a problem for internally hosted assets. Duration weight might be particularly important because this is something I can actually act on. I can say, how are we hosting this? What are we doing here? And then, I, and then the big question is, for any, I'd say like, the analyst wants to know, yes, yes, James, that's very interesting and very troubling, but can you tell me whether this was an outlier or is this a trend? Do I need to engage people? Because that's going to cost me. Well, if only there was a way of jumping over to my data set and looking at it in a very, very flexible manner. Now, by default, we are, it says I want to see all the instances, but I want to restrict that to, and let's, let's leverage that data set that we built up. No, calm down. <laughs> it's not great, but it's not 35 seconds. But let's go further. What if I want to find instead, that's just for this guy, right? This is where I'm already restricting it. And again, because Insights allows me these kind of real-time dynamic questions, I can say, well, don't restrict it to a URL. Show me all of them. I've been collecting, I've been collecting three days' worth of data. I'm looking at over th thousands of instances where I've loaded these assets from around the world. So can I engage my developers? Can I engage my page ar can, uh, architects? Look at constant con <laughs> content hosting options. Yeah, I feel like I can. So I know what to, what to change, right? What is going to be behind going from the version 1 to the version 2 or 1.1 or whatever it may be? But I can do more, too, right? We're, the, look, at the, look at the amount of data that we're capturing, in, and this is default, right? I can, I can simply say instead of, well, don't show me the URLs. You know, we recently were evaluating whether or not we should make a change with the CDNs that we're looking at. Uh, Akamai, Fastly, where are we going to go? Well, let's take a look at how performance breaks down by domain. OK, well, that's interesting. Uh, Swift type, segment. I.O., I didn't realize we were even using that. What are the counts behind it? How often, in, a, in the context of one of these loads, are we leveraging these domains? That's interesting. Sure. A lot, especially New Relic, which stands to reason. So maybe I want to now say, well, don't facet by the domain. Actually, can you show me just? What's coming from, uh, let's say, Swift type? Sure. Did I have that right? There we go. Now I'm going to facet back on URL. Ah. So that's just one. So find out what are we doing internally. OK. Well, how about because those are the internally hosted assets? Where are the ones we're waiting? OK. So now I've got the assets that these pages that I've identified as being important for whatever reason that original identify step, these are the assets that are making up that time. And because I know that these are the assets that are within the newrelic.com domain, I'm going to look and see where are the assets where my back end page, my back end performance in serving up these assets is contributing to that high dura duration overall. So now I'm going to start engaging. I'm going to, I'm going to go back. I think I can go back to my uh, slides now. I'm going to go back to my, no, I'm not done yet. I don't even know if this matters if I'm pointing, but. Right, I'm going to go back to my loop, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. I'm going to make some change, whatever that is. And then once that change goes out, 
I'm gonna, we can, I can do a compare with. I can go back and I can say, okay, great. Well, now we're back here. Show me for these guys. I don't know if I can do compare with with. One week. That's not gonna work because of that. Once I've made my change, oh, yeah, you can't do that for facet. But yeah, I'm gonna compare, I'm gonna, I've got my identified list and I'm gonna then compare to see how his performance improved. Because browser is my reality. This is what is happening. This is where I need to look. So leverage that data to make improvements. Leverage your custom attributes. Add ARR, customer ID, promo code, anything else that correlates to your business and the business value that your application is, exists only to serve, right? We don't, fun as it is, we don't really create all these applications just for the hell of it. We do it to further our business. So let's start identifying from that business perspective where are my targets where user experience matters so much. And then let's leverage, in, let's leverage synthetics to make a change, to improve it. So, because I went through this presentation way faster than when I was rehearsing, I'm going to go right to the Q&A. So, but this is, this, is, this is software analytics. When we talk about how to, leverage, how to leverage what your software is telling you in an analytic fashion and make, th make things better, this is what we mean. And there's a ton of attributes that I didn't even cover. What if I wanted to see where pay, the response body size for assets? You know, maybe I noticed that the duration receive is taking especially long. Well, I know that duration receive can correlate to asset size. So why do I wanna, maybe I want to see what are the top five images that have a size over 500 kilobytes or 50 kilobytes. Or just don't even, I won't even filter it. Just show me what are my top 10, top five images by size. I can do that. And I can be confident because, again, we're talking about conclusions that are drawn from thousands of instances. And it's controlled. So this is your laboratory. This is your window. And, and insights is the ability to actually leverage that data. So I mean, we, are, we talk about continuous deployment, continuous integration. Let's start talking about continuous optimization. Because after I've, made, after I've validated the changes made, Every system has a bottleneck. Something else is going to be slowest. There's going to be another, a next page that could use some optimization. And I can repeat this process on and on and on until I've optimized my pages as best they can be, and by extension, my user experience, and by extension, the value that my application provides my business. So that said, I will, if, are there any questions? Is this resonating? That's a question that salespeople ask their audience, so I'm gonna rely on my training. Is this resonating? Okay, thumbs up. Um, if there are any questions, I've been asked to direct you to the microphone, and if there aren't, I'll deliberately pace across the stage for the next six minutes. <laughs> no, I won't do that to you, I won't do that to you. We can go back to the demo, we can, we can take a look, and this is why it's, I mean, God, this is fun. You know, when you, start, when you start looking and seeing what your data is telling you with a platform as flexible and as creative as Insights, it's fun, because you discover things that you just didn't know. And then, you can, and then you can, again, go back to synthetics and start capturing even more data in a different way. So okay, we're talking about DOM processing duration. We're, we're also capturing other, maybe I want to know about page rendering duration, right? Yep. Oh, I was gonna ask. shoot. I'm not a shill, but I do know James. Uh, <laughs> is what are the other elements of page load time that we're now capturing? Because oh, that, that's, that's, that's new to me. Great question. OK, so let's take a look. So OK, so there are my page rendering duration. There's a couple heavy hitters there. Page rendering is sometimes a little harder to get a handle on because the, the environment does play a role you know, what operating system someone's using, how fast their system is. So it's not as easily uh, mapped to being able to identify uh, areas for optimization, but it can speak to page design, and it is something you want to factor in. So let's take a look at, well, let me just get rid of this guy. <laughs> I mean, to, to answer your question in short, 
in all the areas that we break out the aggregate page, or have been for some time browser, in browser, we're not doing that at an event level. So we're looking at how much time spent in the back end, how much time is spent in network, how much time is spent in DNS lookup, if you're evaluating different uh, DNS servers. Uh, how much time is DOM processing, which I keep coming back to because I think, man, there's so much to do there. Uh, how much time is, is spent in page rendering? And you can extend this framework as well into the back end through APM and into mobile. We, there was a great talk that Jonathan and Susie gave earlier of where you know, we test internally our back end, the services that make up our mobile, platform, or our mobile application with API tests, right? But that's, again, in synthetics. Now, if I change my configuration so that, or my, my thinking so that I'm not just validating at that schedule, I'm collecting a data set to analyze and identify areas of optimization, no reason it can't extend. So to, let's see. All right. Well, we've got a lot more here in, in our account. Uh, ASN, we're also doing uh, longitude and la uh, latitude. Data Explorer, yeah, Data Explorer, great. Well, we're going to see all of the, the, the New Relic custom attributes, so. Because this is, this is, I had to, you know, I, I have to use my, the, the New Relic account. But I mean, I've done this with customers, and we've found assets that were, we, we found a multi-megabyte image that was being loaded uncompressed. They didn't know about it. But it was slowing down one of the pages that was tying to a really critical uh, offering that they were just pushing out and really trying to generate some buzz around. They wanted to know about that. We've provided customers with the ability to take back to their CDN and say, no, 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 this is not a matter of opinion. Here's how the, your CDN's performance is affecting our user's experience of our site. And because, and again, you know, I like those quotes back at the beginning, to measures to know. And that's what browser gives you. And it's a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Because if you do that, if you start leveraging and going back to the changes in your build cycle, where you're, you are incurring a cost. It's someone's time. It's money. And if you're doing that without data, you might be guessing. You might be taking a hunch. You might have a feel. You might think you know. But if you have the data, you can be confident. And if you specify the, the coverage of that data, you can, be even, you can operate with such a degree of confidence that this becomes just part of your DNA. This is just continuous. You are continually optimizing that which matters to you. It's very cool stuff. So, okay, that's got two minutes. Let's see, let's take a look. Did you do that one more in browser? Yeah. Sure, let me see. Do I have my account. Let me see if I. I'd love to. I don't know if I should go to our uh, admin account because that's everything. Um, but I can talk to you, and I can show you on my laptop later because I'm not on one of these. Um, but yes, because and you know, think about browser is a window, right? It is it is a window as to that which simply is. It's not it's not giving you an opinion. It's simply saying this is what your users are experiencing. Here's where they are experiencing it from. And if you guys caught the keynote, now we're even incorporating this kind of software analytics into browser, too. You can start to do geo-analytics. You can start to pivot on these attributes that you're collecting in a very, very friendly way. But it's still, at the end of the day, is what's happening. And it can lead you to how, where, where are your areas of opportunity, right? What should you be working on? What could you be working on so that to, improve, to then push into synthetics and start gathering data? and then doing something with that data. So, so yes, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end a minute early, because I don't know what more, what much more to say than that. But um, I think I go to a, is there a thank you? Do I thank? Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.